because they're loudmouths, because it would be useful to their future, because they left other events, sports, kickboxing, violent things, uh, <laughs> because they were socially awkward, because they were opinionated, because they wanted to learn how to structure an argument so they could beat other people or convince their parents of other things. They wanted to be more open-minded. They weren't very good at public speaking. Someone forced them, be it a teacher, a principal, a parent. They wanted to learn more. They have lots of energy. Uh, they just enjoy public speaking. They joined because a friend or a family member encouraged them to do so. They want to improve in some other, some other category of their lives. Because they're smart. Because they were bribed. Because of the people in the activity that they to learn that they liked. Because it was an elective and they had to pick something, so why not debate? Uh, and for some people, they wanted to improve their English. What's really important about this list, as it demonstrates the whole point of what I'm talking to you right now, is nothing on this list is particular to a type of debate event. So we are all getting the same things from debate. We all come to debate for the same reasons. We did not particularly decide that we wanted to do policy debate or, or public forum debate or LD debate. We just knew that we wanted to do debate. And we got into a category that either had room for us or that was a good fit. So let me tell you a little bit about what I think debate does. Because you gave me this whole list. So before you even gave me this list, <clears throat> I've sat down and thought about some things about debate. Okay. I think that debate comes at a very important time in the United States, or in the world, frankly. We're going through, there's a bad economy going on. There's lots of education budget cuts. Uh, the secondary education climate has changed, foolishly, that it's more focused on sports, or other, it's funding other programs. Our society values physical sports and physical prowess over smarts, sometimes. The debate community itself has some issues, right? We have declining numbers. How many of you know people who came into the activity and didn't stick it out? All these things happen to all the debate events. So we come here for the same reasons. The same things influence all of them. So we should come together as one community as often as we can. Because I think debate changes lives. So some stories from my debaters over too long a career. Things that have been interesting. I've seen debaters who live in economically disadvantaged areas use debate to get them out of the situation they're in. Scholarships to college. Open their eyes to get them to see other ways of living, and so they go off to college. I've seen kids who have family, whose families weren't sure how they were going to feed everyone, and so debate camp for the summer was a way for that kid to not have be a burden onto their parents. I have seen kids who family members have passed away and they were lost. What do we do? Or their parents were absent. They might even have been physically there, but not mentally there. Debate was an outlet for them because they had a family, someone to hang out with. Some coach would yell at them like a parent does. I yell a lot, because that's my parenting style. Uh, debaters who are terrified of their own shadow, who now stand up and can give public speaking addresses anywhere, who've made a group of friends that they never thought they would have, they stay in contact with now. I've had debaters who are terrified of their own shadow that now live in other states and moved away by themselves, and they've been just fine. Debaters who couldn't find any, any sort of uh, satisfaction in their education system, or couldn't find anyone they want to talk to that are like them, that have done debate and found a group of people that are similar, similar to them. The point is, the debate changes your lives. You all come here for different reasons. So it doesn't matter what debate event you're in, you're going to get the same benefits from doing the activity. You are going to become a public, better public speaker. You might be shy. You're going to get over that being in a debate camp. You want something to do, you want something entertaining, we're relatively entertaining. So it doesn't matter where you're at. Now, if I'm admitting my social location, I will tell you I've been a director of debate for many years. I've done all debate events. But my primary focus has been on policy debate. I'm being upfront with you. I love policy debate. I like the rather quick speaking, thinking on your feet, many arguments coming in, 
I think it's awesome that I can look at somebody and say, yeah, we probably have about 10,000 files on our Dropbox. It's fun. If I hadn't done debate, this could be my career. It's only as, as of recently have other debate events started to pop up in college. So if I didn't do policy, I wouldn't be here. So I'm admitting that to you. I love policy debate. It was the very first debate event, by the way. However, I like all the debate events. Because when I think about what they can do, I see the limits of policy. I hate that we talk so fast. I just said the, the opposite. There are times that it's unintelligible. Sometimes we're so focused on going fast that we don't even make sure that the arguments make sense. That there's any sort of synergistic consistency there. I hate that some people have to read so much because some people find that boring. And I have to tell people honestly when they do, do policy, you have to read a lot. <laughs> a lot of stuff. You don't get to pick. And it's a really big topic and people are going to pick with you. So it's not as targeted as LD in public forum. So you don't have as much predictability of what you're going to be debating about. Okay. Policy debate. I have seen us go so focused on judge preferences to pick our judges that we've forgotten how to adapt to other types of judges. Those are disadvantages of policy. But I still love it. Now, I've also seen amazing benefits from it. But I've seen amazing benefits from the other events, right? So let's think about some of those. LD. You know what's really cool about those kids? They know a lot about philosophy. So if you're a policy debater and you find yourself not understanding a particular critique, why aren't you talking to an ld -er? Because they know a lot about philosophy and they know about the foundational philosophies. And if you don't know foundations, well then the rest of it doesn't really hold up too well. Right? If you have a house the foundation breaks and comes apart. What happens to your house? Right. So if you don't know something about philosophy, they're great people to talk to. You know what's really cool about a Lincoln Douglas debater? They have no backup. Right. So when I would make a mistake in a round, hopefully your partner fixes it. Now Jackie was the queen of fixing her partner's mistakes. Right. But it's good to have a partner, isn't it? If you're in policy debate, someone you can always count on. Oh, dears don't have that. They are on their own. So if they make a mistake, it's all on them. I think that's impressive. Their topic changes. Every two months they have a new topic in LD. And it's intense. I mean, this is not like, is oil drilling good or bad? Right? You can just read some stuff. But it's things like, do you understand John Locke's social contract theory? Do you understand John Mills' like, concepts of utilitarianism? Do you, can you really convince some adult what's just or not just? That's tough. That's intense reading. And they have to do that every two months. <coughs> as long as we do different things. Uh, they don't have a partner, so they have prep time. Every debate round has prep time. But they don't get to share theirs. In the other debate events, you can prep, on, prep and prepare your own speeches while your partner is speaking or other things are going on. You don't have that in LD. You're all on your own. It's like being stranded on a desert island by yourself. Make it work. On the other hand, it sucks they don't have a partner. Do policy or public forum so you have a partner. Public forum. And the newest debate event. You know what's cool about a public forum? It was created with one intention in mind. I was coaching when it was created in the 2000s. And the whole purpose of that event was so that any person off the street could walk in, hear it, judge it, and understand it. Wasn't supposed to be very technical like policy. Wasn't supposed to become LD became more technical as time went on with the event. LD was created in the 80s, if you aren't aware of that. So it's still, I guess it's not too new anymore, but it seems new to me. Uh, so public forum, anybody can come in and walk off the street and understand it. There's great value in that. So that your administrator, who you want to give you money, can come and understand what you're talking about. You know what else I think is really cool about PF? Have you ever been in a, in a debate round, if you debate, and thought to yourself, I have no idea what the most important argument is in this round. What argument I need to make sure I win. Right? Even if you're trying to debate with a parent or a teacher, you know you've got many things that you're arguing at once, right? 
that screen's black now. Uh, so the thing about PF is that they only have two minutes in their final speech. So they've got to make some really smart strategic choices. So if you're trying to figure out how you pick the most important argument, why don't you sit down and talk to a public forum debater? Because they've got to figure that out. That's a great skill of public forum. The other cool thing about public forum is they do this thing called the coin flip. So before every round, they don't know if they're going to be affirmative or negative on the resolution or their topic. So they flip a coin and they find out what side they're going. Okay. There's strategy to that decision. Right? You don't just go in and flip the coin and whatever happens. right? Because not only do they pick their side, they pick if they're going to speak first or last. So if they win the coin flip, they have to decide amongst two things. Do I want to decide if I'm pro or con, or affirmative or negative, or do I want to speak first or last? <coughs> Those are important strategic decisions. And in Lincoln-Douglas and in policy debate, if we get into elimination rounds, we also have a coin flip. There's strategy to that. Maybe it's worth talking to a public forum debater to see how they determine what's more important. Because when you're making a coin flip, an LD or policy, you're making the same decision. Do I want to be af or neg, which also influences do I speak last? There's great value in that decision, especially depending on who your judging panel is. There are many times we walk into a round that we're coaching, and we walk in and we look at the panel and we say, <laughs> we've got to be affirmative so we can just be the last ones to talk. There are other times we walk in and say, we have to be negative. We have the best strategy. So there's value to all of that. So that's why I've painstakingly sat down and intentionally put you together at various points. So you would eat together, so you'd have some instruction time together, so that you debate at the same time, that you might see each other's cases and arguments. Because I want you to learn from one another, and I want to emphasize that debate is just important as debate. There's no cooler thing that you could do in your educational career. Anyone can talk to me about any debate any activity under the sun that they might do in middle school or high school or what have you. And I will win that this is the best. This is the best. You get smarter. You learn about current events. You think faster. You learn how to write better. Your vocabulary is better. And no matter what career track you choose, to be able to say that you can effectively write and research and speak in public will make you invaluable. There's nothing that will help you better. You will get better test scores. Debaters, are, it's, there's proof. You get 10% better test scores if you have done debate in high school when you go to take standardized testing. Your GPAs will be better in college, depending on you all go to school and do work. And your job, when you go to apply for a job, people will notice that you did debate. It makes a huge difference. You're all getting the same benefits. None of you said things like, well, I really like to do the first affirmative constructive, or I really like the 1AR, or I really love final focus, or the grand crossfire, or I love doing rebuttals. Right? No one said those things. Instead, you said things like, it's fun. I've met people. I'll be smarter. Debate's going to do that for you. Okay. Right. Take a five-minute break. Then come back.